Hello. I have, I have one, one viewer, so I'm going to start. <laughs> hey, the widgets work. Uh, I am trying out some new Twitch features. Hey, chat works. Great. Okay. All right. So the plan for today is to... Um, I'm just going to do some pretty casual sequencing from Tidal. Uh, using title code, of course, and uh, sequence the electron analog rhythm drum machine. And I'm just going to create some melodic patches on it and kind of some minimal patches, not like fancy scales or anything. But anyway, there's some specific phasing ideas I want to try out with... Um, some, some sine waves and stuff, stuff. So, so let's just see, see what we can do. do. I'm going to bump up my... Code, code size, size here. here. Make it a little bit easier for everybody to see this. this. Uh, uh, and... Let me know if the... the text needs to be bigger or something. All right, so I'm going to start out just by getting the patch dialed in here. Hopefully that's not too loud. <laughs> Let me know if it's too loud. Um, so I don't want a bass drum. I want a... I'm going to use the, the dual VCO synth of... The synth. It's pretty loud, isn't it? Um, I think I might just turn the volume of the whole machine down. All right. Once I get further into this, I'm going to pop my earbud back in. Uh, when I get further in, I'm going to add some um, some modulation control from tidal cycles into these sounds. But for now, I'm just going to kind of start with this really simple sequencing idea I want to try out. I want to make this more... Kind of a just, just a short sound. sound. Let's put a filter envelope on it. Uh, I can't really show my uh, rhythm screen because I, I tried getting an overhead overhead camera set up, but the screen the backlit screen on these um, Mark One devices are not. I, I can't get it to show up without just being it being this bright white light. I can't. Got a little feedback. Well, where's that coming from? Let's try something. Monitor off. Test, test. Hey, oh. Is that better? Hey, there we go. Thank you, taxes. I appreciate that rookie mistake there. All right, so let's put some uh, envelope on this. 
just want kind of a snappy sound. And some reverb. And then I'm gonna, what I wanna do is sequence kind of the same patch on two different pads on the machine and then kind of do this kind of phasing gain thing in the, the code. So I wish I could show the synth better. So I'm gonna copy. There we go. So I'm gonna copy the filter and the amp page all from the first track. Okay, so now I've got two sounds. I'm gonna pan a little bit to one side. I might vary up the patch on one of them here. So I've got uh, MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two, and we're gonna sequence these things. So I don't have any fancy stuff set up in my title environment. I'm no custom functions or anything. Uh, this is my Super Collider boot up. So all I'm doing is just connecting to uh, the, the, the rhythm synth through Super Collider. So I can use this rhythm sound to sequence it. And I'm thinking if I keep these streams up, then I'm going to uh, maybe kind of build up a, a function library that I can just keep using in, in these streams. Um, but for now, I don't have that. Uh, let's. I like. I like large code. Let's make it bigger. Let's make code big. Okay. So. Oh. Uh, very important. Got to get my tab size where I want it. Uh, I am streaming from Windows and my PC, which I have not done in a long time, so my, my VS Code settings are not how I want. All right, so I'm going to play a sound on the on the Rhythm MIDI Chan 0, and title means MIDI Channel 1 on a real, in the real world. So then we'll also play the right note. If you don't specify a note, when you're playing MIDI, uh, it will not play. So you have to specify a note and um, just give it a, a gain. All right, so we've got some sound there. Um, so I'm gonna create a stack And I'm going to basically make a stack so that uh, everything in the stack here, I've got MIDI Chan 1 and 2, or 0 and 1. Both of them are going to use all of these parameters. So they're all going to go to the the rhythm synth, play note C3, and use this gain value. And I can offset one by half a cycle. 
So now I've got one playing on the right, one playing on the left. MIDI channel one, MIDI channel two. By the way, I've got some latency with my audio interface. So when I talk, it's like a few milliseconds delay. So I have to talk more slowly so that <laughs> I can understand myself. How's everybody doing today? Hanging in there? Um, yeah, I wanted to get back into doing these streams because I was feeling like I need to need to engage with the rest of the world a little bit more. All right, so, <laughs> but that aside, let's get back to this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a gain pattern. Let's just say eighth no, uh, like eight items per cycle. Um, what am I gonna do here? What am I trying to do? I'm gonna take the second one just out of the stack. Let's just play with the first. What I want is a gain to range from zero to one over a sine wave. And this gain is not, since it's a continuous function, it's not gonna produce an actual audible sequence. So we have to give it, um, we have to tell it what sequence to play. So we can put the MIDI chan on the other side and tell it to play the channel eight times per second. And then this gain uh, function, which is a continuous function, will be, will be mapped on top of that. There we go. Let's slow this down a little bit. So by default, the, the gain values in title cycles uh, map to a lower, so a gain value of one in title maps to a, a lower velocity in MIDI. So what I kind of found by through trial and error is that a gain of 1.2 is about 100% velocity. So rather than type 1.2 everywhere, I just, I'd like to put on the top of my stacks this gain multiplying pattern on top of everything. So this will just make sure everything is at the full uh, synth volume. And I don't know if I want this to go all the way to zero to be a little bit audible when it gets quiet. All right, so now that I've got that, I want to duplicate this on the second channel. And I want this to phase its gain against the first gain pattern. So if I slow down this whole thing by like 1.1, I should hear kind of like a f over 10 cycles, I should hear kind of this phased difference between the two patterns. I'm gonna make these sounds a little snappier. So I realize this is like a super minimal idea, but this is, <laughs> the 
This is what I was going for today. I'm going to bump up the reverb here. Reverb decay. You know what? Let's make it infinite. Why not? Infinite reverb. We like infinity. Infinity is so nice. Maybe not infinity. <laughs> we'll approach infinity. There's a, a limit joke we could put in here. The limit. Anyway, we're not going to do limit jokes right now. We're not going to take it that far. Okay. So what are some other things we can do to this? Uh, I'd like to kind of... Uh, modulate the timbre of these sounds in addition to their amplitude. So if I make this more of a richer sound, so on the um, on the, the Rhythms Dual VCO engine, you have a balance. Uh, so each, and uh, the Dual VCO has two oscillators. Oh, you know what? Check this out. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I was waiting to do this. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So the Dual VCO has two oscillators and the they can be arranged in different configurations. You can, they can just be summed together and balanced the levels of each, uh, you can balance between the two. So you can have all the way VCO, uh, all the way oscillator one or all the way oscillator two or a mix or blend of both. And then there's other uh, modes of the dual VCO where uh, one oscillator can modulate the other through just frequency modulation or ring modulation or I think there's like a there's like a feedback mode too and then you can change the the waveform of both oscillators so sine triangle saw and so on so I'm just gonna start out with a basic like uh, basic blend of the two I'm not gonna do any modulation we'll just so here's the balance in the middle. This is all the way, is that a saw? And this is all the way sine, or no, triangle. Okay, so we've got triangle and then like a, a saw. Do the same on the other. All right, and then I am going to, I need to look up the documentation of, here, join me on my web browsing journey. Um, I need to go out and look at the owner's manual because I don't remember the MIDI information. I have no idea if this is interesting to you folks, but this is this is what we're doing today. <laughs> All right, so it'll get this is this is how I work. I I just kind of try some things. I look up documentation and um. I just play with stuff till till things are kind of interesting, and then I save those ideas. Okay, we're downloading our manual. All right, and at the end, there's an appendix of all the MIDI control change values, and this this is what we want. So for the dual VCO. There it is. I saw it. 
Nope. Thought I saw it. Here it is. Okay. So for these parameters here, uh, so we can control that balance. It's MIDI control changed number 19. Great. So what I'm going to do is set up a new function called balance, and it's going to accept a pattern. And we're going to do CC value pattern and then CCN 19. And this is on, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it. So now on, we're going to take, we're going to make a mute function here too. GTFO. Um, there's better, I learned of a, of a better way to implement this, but I still like do, using this, this const. I guess you can also do, um, no, I forgot what it is. I'm not gonna lead you astray there. All right, so I'm gonna mute the second one. And let's just modulate that balance of the first. So we'll do a balance. Um, range between zero and 127. And we'll make this a sine wave also. And this needs a structure. So right now we, again, like I was saying before, this is just going to produce a continuous sine wave uh, of values between zero and 127. It has no rhythmic sequence. We need to put one on it. So we can do so that we, we also need to assign the MIDI chan. So we can just do that like this. Uh, so now this control change pattern will match this sequence on that channel. turn the reverb down because <laughs> it's gonna I can't hear what I'm looking for all right so even though the gain is going to zero I can still still hear it view terminal I've got I don't really have anything to show in my terminal, uh, but I will show it. Um, if you so desire. Oh my goodness, I'm still on my full screen, sorry. <laughs> terminal, you, you meant code, got it. Yep, sorry. So let's turn that modulation off. So when I start modulating the balance, oh, I think what is All right, I've got some weird interaction going on between So even though I am modulating the gain pattern, 
this pattern I think is keeping the gain at one the whole time. Why is that? It's on the same channel. So if I put, oops. All right, so I, I think what was happening, I've never experienced this before, or I haven't noticed, but I've got two patterns on the same MIDI channel. One is just a control change pattern, but I think it is still sending a gain value to, uh, it was overriding the gain of this other one because they're both on the same channel. So by putting the, it's kind of a, whatever pattern is last in the stack takes precedence. So this gain pattern will uh, override whatever gain is happening in this one. Something's still a little off though. If I only play the control change pattern, it's... Oh, I know why. Oh my goodness. It's because I'm actually putting a note in the stack here. So what I need to do is take the note and only play it on the second pattern. That's, that's going to do it. There we go. It was a very, very subtle thing there, but it, you could still hear things um, even when the gain was all, all the way at zero. All right, I'm going to modulate this balance more slowly. And I'm going to bring the other channel back. And we are going to modulate the gain. modulate the balance differently. <laughs> Damn it, Cortana. The long reverb just is, is not what I'm looking for. So the balance modulation isn't super interesting. I, what I'm going to do is start, uh, I'm going to change the VCO configuration so that it's doing more like FM or ring modulation stuff. Let's just pick a random config here. I kind of want to um, create a, a, a global performance. Well, I don't need to do that. I can just I can just use title for all this. Um, I want to kind of open up the um, envelope and open up the decay a little bit uh, and kind of modulate that. So let's go back to our title manual here. And we need to go look at the filter information. Nope. This way. Distortion, reverb, LFO, filter. Okay, so filter, envelope, 
depth is 77 and the frequency is 74. So let's do envelope, CCV, pad, CCN. I already forgot what it was. Envelope depth, 77. And to say cut off. Uh, 74. Okay, so now we've got the ability to control the um, filter cutoff and filter envelope. Although I made it, I gave it a pretty I've also got the um, amplitude. There, there's some tricky things with the amplitude envelope too, uh, the hold amount and the release. If I... That sounds fine, actually. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just play. I'm also going to create a parameter to control the amplitude release or the decay time. But let's just do some. Um, uh, let's just start with the filters. And I'm kind of starting to build up a, a stack here that's going to get really kind of annoying to maintain. I've got, I'm going to end up with a big stack of stuff. And I might try and optimize this later as we go. Let's start with channel one. We are going to add, actually, I want something more like the balance pattern. So let's, we're going to do MIDI channel zero. And we will take the envelope. And so the envelope uh, for a positive envelope, we have to start at 64 and potentially um, open it all the way up to 127 and then have it go back to zero for uh, a zero amount at 64. If we go all the way down to a range of zero, that would result in a negative envelope, which, which is fine, but not what I want. And we'll put this at a different... I'm going to put all of my... all of my speed modulation stuff on the left hand side because it's more consistent. Slow 1.0. This is just code golf. It's kind of annoying for you, I bet. All right, so we've got filter envelope, and then we'll change the cutoff. So right now the filter cutoff, when the envelope is all the way open, is at 12? And uh, I don't know, we're just gonna try putting numbers in here. We'll, we'll range it from 12 to 127. And then I want to copy this whole thing for the next, for the other channel. Put some different speeds on it to make it go more slowly. And I'm just going to see what this sounds like. your gain back to something so it's not so quiet when it goes all the way. I'm 
not going to open the envelope quite that much. Hello, thanks for joining. Try some different VCO configurations again. So we're at CPS 0 0.5, which would be, what, 60 over 120? Well, doesn't matter. I know it's about 120. I'm going to add a delay to this. But I've got to time it right. Drop down that envelope even further. It's a, well, also the cutoff doesn't need to be so so high. Let's put the cutoffs. Let's get a let's add a variable. So we'll do max cutoff. We'll make it ninety. Max cutoff and max cutoff. Variables are good. Oh. All right, and then kind of the, the last parameter I want to look at is the amplitude decay, which is 80. So we'll make this. I get, you need some comments in here too. <laughs> um, this is pad one, pad two. And let's put our gain sequence at the top of each of these. I, this is just super detailed organization stuff, but I like to kind of have the gain kind of the audible sequence first and then any control patterns after that. Um, all right, so let's add amplitude or decay. And I'm gonna I wanna I'm gonna have to change this so that we're not repeating this. This MIDI chan zero times sixteen, MIDI chan one times sixteen. This kind of stuff drives me nuts where I'm just repeating copying and pasting, so we'll get back to that. Yeah, um, title MIDI is a lot more to keep track of, um, and it's because you have to separate, well, there, yeah, I think for a few reasons. I'm gonna go back to my face cam. <laughs> I'll remember to switch back. Yeah, I think MIDI is a lot harder in title than samples because uh, for two main re reasons. One is your control patterns are separate from your sound pattern. Uh, in an early, early, early version of the of Tidal and MIDI, this is before uh, Super Dirt existed. 
uh, before Super Collider was a big part of the title chain of stuff, you used to be able to do, um, you know, like a sound MIDI, uh, and then you could do like your balance, um, and then your cutoff, you know, you could put your control print. Um, oh, dang it. I'm not showing my freaking <laughs> screen again. <laughs> I'm going to stop using that face cam. I type too much. Um, yeah, the, the, the MIDI libraries you could import. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and you could even use a custom parameter of a, of a custom synth like Volca, I don't know, LFO speed. So you used to be able to do stuff like this and then your your actual note could be um, completely uh, kind of integrated into your, uh, it, with your control patterns. So you could do like a Euclid sequence with these notes and these control patterns mapped onto that. So I think Alex is working on this. I don't, I might be wrong, but I think uh, he's kind of working on bringing that behavior back into Tidal MIDI with Super Dirt. Um, so we'll get there, I hope. Um, yeah, pre Super Dirt, that stuff was insane. Uh, I, I miss the old classic dirt, but it was difficult to get installed and running. Um, so let's do a so we got a decay value for the first one. Ah, oh, sorry, I'm used to my other computers keyboard shortcuts. It's just kind of funny. That's all. All right. So all right. So now I'm also going to set the amplitude decay of both of these. So this might, might open up uh, a lot of, a lot more sustained sounds. There's one other thing we can do. Go back to the, the dual VCO page. I'm gonna adjust the, the bend as well. That's 23. Oop. Bend pat 23. Uh, despite how difficult the MIDI programming can be with Tidal, I prefer that over samples. Um, I have a love-hate <laughs> relationship with with samples um, in Tidal. It's uh, I think there's a ton of sequencing power, and you can do so many cool things with samples in Tidal and Super Dirt itself. You can mangle them and granulize them and so on. But um, I, I hate organizing samples and I hate kind of, you know, creating them if I want my own sounds and it's just kind of a struggle. All right, so we're gonna modulate the, the bend here. Yeah, I, I like working with synths better because it's it's a faster way to kind of work, but um, but then you gotta deal with all kinds of other integration issues with Tidal. Okay, so let's modulate the bend parameter, which will add a, a pitch envelope. I'm doing 
nothing here but just making noise. Oh, oh, what did I do? Bend. This is getting fun. What I want to be able to do is do something like this from scratch in a like a live setting. Um, all right, that's something I'll have to ponder. If I could have shortcuts for all of these things, um, where it's just really fast to type and do, that'd be really fun, and come up with something new every time. But I, I don't I don't know if you can because a lot of the the cool stuff about this these patterns is baked into the the guts of this stack and it's hard to kind of isolate these things or to it's hard to abstract this stuff out so that it's less to type. Um, all right, that's a that's a different topic. All right, so let's um, what's it gonna do next? I had an idea. I forgot what it was. Oh, maybe add an LFO of some sort. So what could we modulate on the LFO? We could detune it a little bit. So if I try and modulate the tuning of, or the detune, <laughs> slow it down. So I could control the LFO depth and speed from Tidal. Never heard this kind of sound come out of this machine. It's something weird. I, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do it. Um. All right, so I'm gonna modulate the envelope or the LFO depth and the LFO speed of both of these patterns or both of these pads. I'm gonna copy the LFO page I just built to the other one. I hope you're enjoying this because I am. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's go to LFO. So speed is 102 and depth is 109. So LFO speed. I already forgot. What was it? Speed is 102. Depth. All right. So we need to mod modulate the LFO depth from uh, 64 to 127, and then the speed, same thing, to go from 0 to 127. I've got some, I guess 
just with my experience with this mach- with this machine, I know if I go all the way to go, go all the way to zero, these values will go negative, which is fine. It's just not what I want. Um, low flow speed. Sixty-four, one twenty-seven, sine, and LFO depth. Same thing there. Okay, we'll copy these two. I just I, I like. Um, setting different speeds for all of these modulation curves because then nothing will ever, well, th- then things line up a lot less. Is that LFO a sine wave that's getting reset somehow? Yeah, okay, so the LFO I'm controlling is on the synth and it is a free LFO that is never getting reset and it's hardwired to control the second oscillator on this voice. So all I'm doing from title is uh, setting that free LFO's speed and depth. It sounds like it's doing some sort of reset behavior. Yeah, like on this one. It sounds like there's some sort of reset going on, but I think I must be um, somehow going. The LFO is probably taking a parameter of a parameter of the voice outside some range, and it's resetting. That's my guess. But I'm not specifically setting up any kind of reset behavior in the LFO. It's just um, it's just a free LFO on a, a triangle wave shape. So that it's a triangle wave shape, which I think is what your question was. Yeah, so that 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 weird stepping behavior, I honestly don't don't know how that's happening. It's I think it's just a parameter that's getting put back into a, a range somehow. All right, so let's see what this does. think you can hear the LFO effect very well because there's just so much attack and bend information happening. That's fine. We can slow it down. The magic smoke. (laughs) This is gnarly. So what I kind of want to do is actually offset the everything in the pad two side by half a cycle. Yes. Um, so I'm going to put the whole t- pad two in its own stack because I don't know any better. Stack within a stack. And I'm going to offset this whole stack by half a cycle. Oh, no, I need to do 16th of a cycle or 32nd of a cycle. Thirty-second of a cycle. (laughs) 
We could optionally um, increase the speed of one, too. Alright, so this is... Um, all right, so what I'm thinking is I'm gonna add some other drum sounds in here, but I need to kind of refactor how I'm doing these patterns because they're too, they're not concise enough. Um, would I go back and try to isolate it or, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, so, um, yeah, thanks for the question about what, what am I trying to do? What am I going for? So right now I'm, I'm just, I'm literally just playing and I have no desired outcome. So what, what I might take away from this is kind of an idea for the future when I'm off camera and I'll think, oh, I, I remember when I had that phasing idea that worked pretty well and I'm going to save this code and post it. Uh, but I might take this and then try to develop it in some more musical way, or maybe it's musical enough. You know, this could be its own little independent experiment. Um, so yeah, I could record this. I could then chop it up or use it in a DAW project and just record this audio raw. Uh, but typically when I use title, I think of it as a, a live instrument. So if I wanted to use this type of sequence, I would probably find a way to get it to work with some drum sounds or some other percussion sounds or something. So I'm not going to try to develop this in a specific way, but if I wanted to keep it and use it, I would incorporate it as on, as it is in some musical way with other sounds and use it live use it on the live synth um yeah i i really suck at recording ideas and just working with the audio later i think there's a, a lot of people do that but i've i've struggled to really enjoy that process um kind of mining for sounds later it's a very common practice but i think more in terms of live sounds i guess um but i'm i'm trying to I keep trying to grow, I guess, and do that. But that's not what I'm going for right now. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, all right, so let's let's refactor this because this code is really annoying. Um, how are we going to do this? Let's just do something like MIDI, or we'll do pad one, pat, and we'll do pad two, pat, and then we can replace all of these um, MIDI chan zero times sixteen. We can replace all these with pad one, pat, and. Pad two pad. So the point in doing this is now I've kind of, oh, what did I do? That's not what I wanted. <laughs> um, now I can more easily adjust these patterns. And so like if I wanted to increase the cycles per second back to 5, 0 0.5, I could, um, you know, lower or slow down this, this sequence if I wanted to. Uh, can you live sample in title? The answer is yes, you can. Uh, let's, let me back up. 
Uh, do I ever sample from the rhythm into title so I can free up the rhythm for other sounds? Yeah, so um, I, I have. And I'll, I'll maybe design a kit on the rhythm, and then I will just record one shots of drum hits uh, or record a lot of variations on a particular sound and just chop those up into single one shots, and then I can use them in title. Um, I, I dislike that process because um, chopping and slicing up samples is absolute hell to me. <laughs> Um, and the machine itself, the, the rhythm has, I, I am not an analog snob, but this machine has so much warmth and grit and attitude. And when you play sounds through title, you really miss that. So I am in love with this machine's sound. <laughs> um, especially when you start layering like layering in like the cymbals and kick drums, there's this kind of gritty sizzle to it. Um, and if you just play those sounds as samples and title, you, you miss that. So, um, but I will also just load samples into the rhythm. So far the, the rhythm has plenty of voices and pads for me to do whatever I want. So I, I haven't really found, um, I haven't felt limited by the, the rhythm in terms of how many sounds I can use, but I do have to change kits if I want to, you know, totally change the sounds I'm using and stuff like that, which is kind of not fun, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, taxes, you can live sample into title. There was, I know Alex, I don't know if it was a public video, but he did something where he was sampling his voice into buffers in Super Collider, and he was then playing his voice loops in Tidal. So it's absolutely possible to do to do live sampling into Tidal and then code that recorded audio. Um, I think that's a pretty picture. Um, Live, creating a live looper. I don't know if this is what he was using, but yeah, if you go to this creating a live looper page on titlecycles.org, I think there's something here that will, yeah, you, you can then work with these recorded buffers. It's pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. Th uh, Hey, hey, it's Euler Room. Hello, hello, Euler Room. Uh, yeah, thanks for linking to that. I have not checked that out. Let's go look. Yeah, or you can use this. Oh yeah, I've seen this before. Cool. I have not tried this yet. I I want to try resampling audio. I want to try resampling me playing my drums and coding at the same time. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work. Or voice, I think that'd be, I think that'd be fun. <laughs> Euler room. All right, back back to the matter at hand. Um, okay, so I've refactored my pattern up here so I can independently control its speed uh, separate from the cycles per second. So if, I'm going to add some drums to this. Is that a kick drum? Oh, you know, I want to do a, a sound design stream on the rhythm too. There's so many cool things I've learned about recently. So these, these VCO synths already add a ton of low end. So I might, I might end up competing with them. I'm not sure. Uh, you know what? <laughs> All right, we're going to do things the, the wrong way. Do. I love Tom Toms. <laughs> Pew. Pew. Okay, the 
next hour is just going to be me hand drumming on tom toms okay so we're gonna, i'm going to make a kick drum out of a filter sweep so i'm going to change this pad Getting close to the microphone. Hopefully, I'm not too loud here. So, I'm going to change this to a noise engine, which is a little, a little harsh sounding, but I'm going to put the, put a filter on it, and I make this filter resonant. So, hopefully, it won't kill your ears. You can hear me tapping on the machine, can't you? Um, all right, so we're gonna make a kick drum out of this. There we go. That sound, that's so smooth. A little bit of overdrive in there. Excuse me. So. Somebody asked, all right, I'm going to go to face cam again, and I promise I'm going to remember, remember to go back. So somebody asked about, do I just sample from the rhythm and then use the samples in title? Or do I, uh, and I, and I said that I like to use the rhythm drum machine because it's so full of weird, you know, gritty analog warmth. One perfect example with this kick drum patch that I've made from a filter sweep it's like every hit is it is literally different every time it's you play it even from code even if it's not with your hands because the the pads are velocity sensitive but even if you just sequence it from the outside these it's like it, it has a different quality every time you hit it and it's got aftertouch which i have not tried to control yet uh, but i i like this kind of kick you hear that noise engine underneath that little it's like this gritty kick drum That's, that's, oh. you hear that? It's, oh, it's like this rumbling, sandy beach. I, sh I should hit record and make a drone album. All right. Oh, sounds so good. So yeah, I want to do a kind of like a, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull it off because I can't show the, the backlit screen on the synth, but kind of a tutorial on how to make some of these sounds. Uh, yeah, so I don't, I don't know if it's pink noise or white noise. Um... It's a white noise generator. That's from the documentation. So it's a white noise generator uh, coupled with a resonant, uh, and then a resonant filter being applied to that. So it's not a sine wave, it's a resonant filter, but it's probably very sine wave-like. It should be pretty close to a sine wave. If I turn the noise all the way off, Yeah, I need the noise to come through for it to. There we go. Yeah, I need the. I need the noise for it to to for the filter to open up, so I can't isolate the. 
the filter enough. But yeah, basically it's like a, a resonant filter, approximately a sine wave, and I can adjust the intensity or the, the level of that. Um, I almost forgot to go back to the coding window. <laughs> All right, pew, pew. let's make a another white noise percussive sound out of this. And I have no idea what I'm gonna do with these sounds either. This is just, it's just for fun. All right, so I'm gonna change this to a noise generator as well. And I'm gonna put a kind of a weird filter on this. Um, Let's just start with that. So I basically just created the, uh, on this pad, I'm using the white noise engine with a kind of a, a negative uh, filter envelope with some attack and decay. It's a bandpass filter. Just kind of quickly sweeps through the, the sound. So rather than a clap, nothing wrong with a clap, but something a little more unique. Okay, we could do some, we'll do some Kindom style sequencing with those. So that's on MIDI Chan 6 and 7. And I don't, I don't even know if these are going to sound good with these dual VCO patterns, but let's just um, see what, let's just kind of audition these. We'll do mini chan. We'll just choose between randomly between six and seven. And offset. And then we'll do a gain pattern, just kind of a random gain. Let's just let's just take that that sequence actually that'll be fine let's take ah cortana you're back all right so let's just put this into our big stack all right i, I don't know what this is going to sound like drums in there. Oh, I need a, a note.
Let's make the dual VCO pattern a little faster. So, <laughs> I'm not going to sign into Cortana. <laughs> she just needs to go away. She just needs to go away. Um, <laughs> I'll name it Cortana Microchip. Um, so from a from a musical st musical taste standpoint, I'm not really liking how the drums are fitting into this. Oh, that, that's fine. So you'll kind of notice that the um, the 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 volume of the uh, melodic notes is going a lot faster than the sequences themselves. So I'm gonna s slow down those. Um, gain patterns do slow should hopefully last a little a little longer So what are the drum code lines doing? Yeah, let's break that down. Sorry, I am I am a super big nerd when it comes to code organization. So um, that's why I'm constantly typing and moving stuff around. Um, all right, let's let's zoom in on this. You know, let's make the code bigger. go 48 we can isolate this chunk here um, so each line is basically uh, a part of the pattern controlling something so I'm gonna start at the very bottom um, actually I need this so the very first part is uh, when title is sending its messages to super collider this part of the message is telling Super Collider to send MIDI to my synth. And that is configured here. So in my Super Collider boot up, I've got um, the ry rhythm synth name wired up to this MIDI device, which is my synth. Then I am playing note C3. That is the, the main note of my synth, if I think C5 is the default in title, and that is not, it doesn't, uh, it, it results in a much higher pitch on my synth. So C3 is where I want it to play. Then I am creating a pattern that randomly chooses between MIDI channels six and seven. That's six and that's seven. Um, this part, this one, this, uh, this code will shift the, the random choose cycle over by one. Uh, and the reason is because if I just 
have a choose, it basically gets the same random result as degrade by. And I will describe degrade by in a second. But if I shift the, the random cycle over by one, I will get unique values compared to what's happening in degrade by. Then my actual audible sequence is this uh, gain one times 16. So I'm just saying play 16 notes at a volume of one. And last, this degrade by will remove 80% of those notes that are played randomly. Uh, in title, all random sequences get kind of have the same values in the same cycle. So if I don't offset the, the MIDI Chan ran, random channel choosing pattern here, if I don't offset that, then this, it's possible that all, uh, every time MIDI Chan 7 is chosen, it's actually going to remove that note. So I want to make sure that every, um, uh, that these two, the, the random MIDI channel selection and the degrade by function, both are on different cycles. The other thing I could do is I could actually shift the cycle up here too. So then everything moves over bef before the degrade by gets applied. That would do the same thing. If I want louder, do gain 1.2. If I do degrade by zero, we'll hear everything. That's not bad. <laughs> so hopefully that uh, kind of uh, answers your question about what the, the drum code is doing. Um, all right, back up here. So I, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, you know what? Those long sustained notes with the, the LFO weirdness is, are pretty cool. So I'm gonna, what if I did a MIDI Chan pattern of, that was super slow. And if I made sure that the decay was always all the way on, I just want, and then our NL, and then the LFO depth. Let's just always leave it up. filter cut off a bit. So let's let's add a crash symbol, because <laughs> why not? So there's a few different symbol engines that we've got available to us. Here's the default symbol, uh, but I actually really like the ride symbol engine. It's a little, it's 
a little sizzlier. So back to the analog description I was giving. I don't know if it's coming through on the stream, but kind of that. You can hear the, it sounds like the, the symbol or I, I don't know what, I think it, I think it's the low frequencies of the kick are, uh, either really quickly ducking out the symbol or there's some kind of distortion or compression interference going on. But there's, I can hear it really well in my headphones, but there's like this really gritty attack that happens when you play both at the same time. So that's why I like the synth. Um, yeah, highs and lows, exactly. That's what I want. So let's let's add a symbol in here to the stack. Uh, we'll do note C3, maybe Chan 10, and we'll play this every eight. I also want to make sure that the it's still going. I want to make sure that there's a kick and a snare at the same time. So I'm going to also uh, make sure that the, the kick channel plays at the same time. Except it's it's always it's not it feels like it's still this symbol pattern is being overridden by the the kick snare pattern up here. It's not playing a kick every time. I want it to. It's, I'm gonna isolate this sequence so it's debug it. just I want to take this off the rails I'm gonna um, add some of this or send some of the, these sounds to the delay on the machine and then modulate the delay time which will just cause all kinds of mayhem all right so these sounds are already going to the delay So let's send the kick drum, which is going to be a little much for delay, but what, whatever. Uh, 
All right, to the docks. Let's look for the delay time control change number. All right, let's go to delay time 16. I'm gonna bring my font size back down. It's a little, it's a little much, isn't it? All right, so let's go back up. We'll do delay time pat equals CCV pat. I already forgot. 16. <clears throat> so the effects on the the rhythm synth run on their own MIDI channel. So I need to remember what that is. MIDI config channels. Channel 13. So I can do MIDI chan 12 since we're zero indexed. All right. Thanks for tuning in, Yaksu. Appreciate it. All right. MIDI chan 12. We'll do delay time range one to, I don't know, 48. Um, and then we're just going to pick a random value. So we need to, um, I'm only going to pick a random one every cycle, I guess. I don't know what this is going to do. We're going to find out right now. good. Let's uh, increase the feedback as well. Is it 19? 19. This is just kind of chaotic, but whatever. Delay feedback. And we got to be very careful with this one. Uh, we will do a minimum. Let's do 33 to 60. Hopefully I will not hurt your ears. I am sorry in advance if I do. delay choices to specific values here. We'll do eighty-two to forty-eight. And we'll move the, shift this over so we get unique values. in for a second. Because what else are we going to do on a Saturday morning? Let's 
So the next idea I've got is to maybe actually play some specific notes. Um, so I, can, I can play this stuff chromatically. Which with all that pitch bending going on, you can't really tell, but um, let's change these to be uh, scale and uh, we'll do a slow run. Twelve. So the problem with this on my specific synth here is that this um, it's going to play a scale uh, of this um, it's going to play of 12 notes on the Rituson scale however this will start at c5 and if you recall the rhythm um, likes to start at c3 not c5 so i need to there's probably a better Haskell way to do this, but um, um, I just do this because this is what I remember. <laughs> I do this uh, pipe dash, which is a subtraction operator on the note pattern. So I'm decreasing it by 24. Should work. Same for the other one. I might even need to go down another. they're playing anything right now that's just all, all you're hearing is just carry over from other stuff minus 24 oh yeah you're right let's try that first let, let me, i'm just going to isolate this first something weird's going on notepad do MIDI Chan zero plus four. Yeah, this is not playing anything. This is not playing a dang thing. Something about the run 12, I think, that it doesn't like. <laughs> so let's change this to be just, I don't know, we'll do. Um, this is a very inefficient way to code it, but. Okay, so now we subtract. Nothing. Oh my goodness, you know what? I'm subtracting negative 24. So I, I'm actually adding 24. There we go. That was a problem. Let's do a run again. Let's see if we can get our 
let's do what was suggested in the chat here. Yeah. Oh, so now you're hearing other stuff. Why is that? Am I going too far down? That might be too far, too low. It, it's the 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 rhythm is a is a temperamental machine when it comes to playing the MIDI notes. Sometimes it will play other pads, um, so you have to kind of find the the sweet spot for where to kind of range the MIDI notes in. That's what we want. Okay, so let's go back. So we don't want this anymore. 
just this. No. I'm going to mute my mic, but I'm going to record the master channel. That's what I'll do. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to play a quick clip and be right back. Okay, got a clip. So I am going to, how big is this? If we make this a MP3 and stream. Um, let's make it MP3. All right, so let's see how how big is this file here. <laughs> That's like 330, 333 kilobytes. I don't know. I'm just wondering if it's a good idea to put these clips in the Git repo. Otherwise, it's going to get huge really quick. Um, uh, Uh, what do you what do you all want me to do? For those of you who think you might refer to the Git repo, do you want the clips or do you think it's not worth it? It's just a little big to put all these files in a Git repo. Um, do I always route to DA? Yes, I do. I don't really. So with MIDI, none of the audio is going to Super Dirt or Super Collider at all. So I kind of have to use the DA. But even for just sample-based work, I, I always use the DAW. And the reason is because I usually have a lot of effects and stuff going on. Um, I'll add some granulizer stuff, some reverbs, and a lot of times I want those things just baked into the sounds all the time. And if I record, I want that stuff on. So, um, but yeah, I always use the DAW. What am I using for routing on Windows? What a great question. This whole week I've been trying to figure that out and I don't have a good answer for you. So let me um, show you. It's a, it's a physical solution. I'm sorry, I'm gonna move the camera around. So I've got a my interface here where my uh, drum machine is going into inputs five and six in the back. And then the da, sorry. Then the da routes everything internally. So I've got my microphone and then here you can see in in my um, in FL Studio, I'm listening on those inputs five and six. Then everything in the DAW goes out through the master to the monitor of my interface. Then, um, for streaming purposes, then I actually take the well, these are five and six. Then I take the main output of the monitor physically loop it back into the inputs of my interface and then my streaming software will um, then listens on these two inputs. So for at least a, a MIDI based approach, that's how I'm streaming. Otherwise, if I'm not streaming, I don't have to do the, do the loop back. I can just record directly on the inputs. If I'm using samples from Super Collider, then it is a nightmare. Um, I cannot do it on Windows. I have no 
reliable way to record audio from Super Collider into my DAW. I've tried multiple virtual audio cable products and um, different loopback routing options on um, uh, my interface and they all either cause like pops and stuttering or crashes. Um, I, I can't figure it out. Um, so on Mac, it's a lot easier. I want to use my PC more, but I'm kind of struggling to find a way to do it unless I get a new interface, which I'd rather not do. So I'm figuring that out. Um, but yeah, on Windows, I my opinion is that audio routing is awful and I just, I'm, I'm sticking with a MIDI approach when it comes to um, uh, Windows. So what VSTs do I use the most? Um, I don't use too many. In FL Studio, I, I use some of the built-in stuff like uh, the built-in, there's one called Maximus, which I use for a lot of kind of master chain, just um, end of, end of chain things like compression and limiting. Um, I use one called Harmer a lot, which is a synth. I'm not going to really show that today, but um, looks like this. I use this all the time uh, in a lot of recordings and stuff, but I'm not going to get into that one today. Otherwise for VSTs, that's about it. I just picked up the new Vital synth, but I haven't really used it much. Um, do I have it? Let's open up. No, I don't have it on this computer, so I can't show it. Um, so yeah, uh, I've also been trying out Reaper and Ableton to as different DAWs to maybe get around some other challenges I've got. But uh, anyway, audio routing is a constant pain, and I, I hate I hate audio routing. Um, What do I do for a living? I'm an independent software developer. So I am a contractor and I take gigs um, and I write, I write software, <laughs> do mostly web based stuff. So web technologies like um, <clears throat> backends like Node.js and .NET and front end stuff like React, any kind of browser JavaScript stuff. So. That's, and then any kind of technology that integrates with that stuff, databases, third-party products, all that stuff. Um, any Haskell in production? I've never used, I've never developed in Haskell. I'm a, I use title, but I don't, I'm not a Haskell guy. I, Haskell is confusing to me. <laughs> um, all right, so let's create a Git repo here, and I'll upload this code, and then we're gonna we're gonna end the stream. And let me sign in to GitHub. And I'll share my screen in a sec here. All right, so I've got a new um, new Git repository. Uh, if you go onto GitHub, GitHub.com/kindom/streams, and we're gonna we're gonna put that stuff in. Put this stuff in there. Um, what have we changed here? Oh, we added the MP3. So nobody seemed too excited about the MP3s. So I'm gonna. I'm going to exclude these are changes. I haven't staged these yet. All right, let's add a git ignore to this. There we go.
Let's make sure I got everything configured right. Oh, I don't have my SSH key set up yet. Oh, all right. I will. I will get this taken care of in a little bit. <laughs> um, I'll push this in a bit, and you can find the code on this this uh, streams repo soon. All right. Uh, yeah, I could put the audio elsewhere. That's a good point. Um, I'll, I'll work that out. It's we're, we're early in this, this, uh, new streaming series. So we'll figure it out. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, before I sign off, I do want to, uh, ask if you would consider, uh, donating to title cycles on coffee. Uh, go to the go to titlecycles.org, consider uh, buying a cup of coffee. Uh, it helps continue um, title development. Uh, I personally uh, donate a little bit every month because I use title every day. I've been using it for about six or seven years. So the least I can do is spend a few dollars a month. So please consider to do so. That's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate everybody's comments and questions. And I'm not sure what, uh, if this will be on a schedule. I don't know. You'll get the Twitch notifications. I'll post on Twitter if I decide to start doing this more regularly. So, all right. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Appreciate it. And have a great weekend. I'll see you in the future, if not later. <laughs>